Hello, everybody, and welcome to the TeacherCast Educational Broadcasting Network. My name is Jeff Bradbury. Thank you so much for joining us today and making TeacherCast your home for professional development. We have a fantastic show. Today, we're going to be talking all about reading comprehension and a great program from school specialty called Worldly Wise. We have a fantastic guest on. I want to introduce Peter Cleary. Peter, welcome to the show. Welcome to TeacherCast. Well, thank you very much. I'm really pleased to be here. Thank you so much for joining us today. Of course, people who have been listening to TeacherCast are very familiar with the great things happening at School Specialty. Today, we're going to be talking all about reading comprehension and ways that we can help our students learn to read. You guys have a brand new program out called Worldly Wise I-3000. Tell us a little bit about it. Yeah, absolutely. Yes, it's, a, it's an exciting new uh, venture for us going from a, a, an older digital platform for Worldly Wise 3000 to a new platform on a, a pro platform called Exploros. And it is called Worldly Wise 3000 Online. And it's really brought the teacher and instruction to the fore in terms of vocabulary engagement and development. So uh, we have an exciting partnership with Quizlet as well. We'll talk a little bit more about that. Uh, so yes, we're, we're, we're very excited about launching this. Uh, we're getting some really strong traction already in the field. It just came out in July and we're already seeing uh, an incredible interest in it. Now, I know you said that it just came out in July. Of course, you can find information over at worldlywise3000.com. That's W O R D L Y wise3000.com. And as you said, July, there was a lot of buzz about this at the ISTE conference down in San Antonio. What are people saying about this? How have they been receiving this amazing new program? Well, there, there really are excitement, especially people who knew the uh, existing program that had been working on it online, because we brought in a lot of new features with uh, social engagement, where there's peer-to-peer -peer sharing uh, on WordyWise I3000. So students are interacting amongst themselves with the teacher, with their cohorts, and uh, they're able to, uh, to create discussion walls and kind of like Instagram, right? So there's this ongoing interaction to increase overall student engagement and excitement around vocabulary. And you said ex engagement and excitement there. I love some of the activities that are going on, but I wanted to ask if you have, uh, have an opportunity here. Could you show us a little bit about what Worldly Wise looks like? Sure, yeah, that'd be great. I'd love to show you Worldly Wise. I'm now logged in as an instructor. And uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to a lesson here that's been already established and set up for a particular group of students or class. And when the teacher logs in, you can see there's a dashboard view, which basically gives you an idea of which students are at what stage of this particular lesson, which is lesson uh, 10 of level four. And so that's sort of just a quick high level snapshot. But if I go into the activities, uh, I'll just run you through some of the key steps or components of it. We call them scenes in, in the Explorers platform. So when, when students first go into a lesson, they start with what we call rate your word knowledge. So it's, it's a self-assessment on the vocabulary words that they're going to engage with. And we're gonna ask them, you know, have you ever seen this word before? Or you think you've seen this word before, but I'm not, you know, I'm not sure what it means. Right down to, yeah, I absolutely know what this word means. So this is from a teacher perspective. So they can go in and if they click here, they can see exactly which students are responding. And this is the part that brings the teacher into the instructional fold because they'll see if there are certain words that a bunch of students aren't getting, they're gonna take that opportunity to do some instruction around those particular vocabulary words. So they start with this word knowledge rating, and then they go into the word list. So they're gonna bring up the definitional uh, word lists, and you'll see that some of them have uh, pictures or images to represent the word meaning, which helps support you know, at-risk readers or EL students, or just generally helps them. So the idea is they're gonna just look at the definitions here. But if I scroll down, you'll see uh, this little applet called Quizlet. So if I click on that, it's gonna take me to an official study set and some gaming activities via Quizlet, which is included. So every student that signed up both on the print side with a workbook or on the online digital side, they get access to these activities. So I'm just gonna show you an to example of the flashcards. So in this, this is the case where it says to cause sickness, pain, or trouble. So students gotta think about that and maybe the words uh, ale. ale. 
So they flip the card and see if they get it a correct. Sign of something. Sign of something. Symptom. Symptom. And so they can work on the flashcards as an example. Uh, there's also writing and spelling activities. So to shrink from, as, it, it, as if from fear. So they would, if they can think of the word, they'll type it in and then they're gonna click that and they can get corrective feedback on that as well. And there's also a, a spelling activity. Livelihood. So it's livelihood, so I would have to type. And then click enter. Livelihood. L-I-V-E-L-I-H-O-O-D. Okay. So see how it corrects me automatically? So that's Quizlet. I don't need to spend too much time in there, but that's all part of the learning opportunity for the students. Once they're finished that, they'll go back to their activities and they'll go into a series of practice activities and other reinforcement activities. Here's just an example where there, there are some sentences pre presented to them. Like I thought uh, Jacqueline tripped by accident, but it was a deliberate prank to make us laugh. And if that's a correct response, they're gonna mark that correct. And I can see as the instructor, who's getting it correct and maybe who didn't get it correct. So you're tying the teacher in at that level. So they'll go through a series of activities like this, like in this case, making connections. Uh, so they're gonna choose the correct answer. And again, teacher's gonna monitor exactly who's getting it and who's not. And there, there's, there's 12 scenes. I won't go through, through, them all, through them all for the sake of time. But here's an example of what we call illustrative vocabulary. And this is where we get into the social engagement part with students. Because as students respond, in this case, they're asked to, to design or, or draw or you know, represent the, mean, the meaning to the word communicate. And as I click on these student uh, icons, it'll bring up what they've posted. And once they've shared that, uh, they'll be able to see other students posting. So that's the peer-to-peer -peer sharing and social engagement. And the teacher can control that. They can have it posted only the teacher or they can have it uh, shared amongst others. So, so there's all kinds of these social sharing opportunities. Uh, if I go just uh, skip ahead to scene 11, here's another extension, because WordDevice 3000, it's not just the definitional list, the flashcards, but all of these things are working with the words in context. They're tying into vocabulary, they're tying into creative writing. And here's another example where students are given some of the words from the word list and asked them to, to do something and, and to respond. So using as many words from the list, you know, they want to describe how someone once consoled you, for example. And here's where students are posting what their responses are. And as you can see here, uh, the teacher has control to edit or delete them, or they can have them just posted to the teacher if needed. And as they get to the end of a lesson, so again, we can go back to Quizlet, because they really want to go into the more gaming activities so for example, there's one game that's a matching activity. So I go in here, it's, it's matching. So it's a, a drag and drop activity. So if distance from top to bottom, well, that's depth. I can drag that down and I get the correct response. So to make known or to give exchange information, maybe that's communicate. And notice how there's a timing component and an accuracy component. They're actually gonna get scored and rated based on how they do relative to people all across North America or the world who are on, on Quizlet for our particular study activities. Peter, I gotta tell you, it looks really, really easy to use. What grades do you recommend WordlyWise for? Well, keep in mind, we have both a print version of WordlyWise and the online. So for the online, it is levels two through 12. So you can go down as low as grade two uh, what we do see is that some people are, you know, choosing to use print for younger learners. And as you get into upper elementary, middle school and high school, uh, see the engagement piece as, as important for the older students. So you can actually have a hybrid in, in, a, in essence, where uh, a school may have some print for younger users, digital for older users. So really online grades two and above is fine. And we said that the website for any more information here is worldlywise3000.com. If a teacher is using this system and is looking for support, how does school specialty support those teachers that are using it in their day-to-day -day classrooms? Yeah, and then there is, uh, we have uh, technical support numbers and, and emails that people can contact us for either technical things or pedagogical instructional guidance. 
at this time of the year, people may be inquiring just to get a little bit of assistance to help set up their classes or things like that. Uh, when they're new to it, they may they need a little extra help. But most people are getting up and running on their own. We have documentation that we provide with the welcome email uh, called Getting Started, and there's a lesson flow document. And it really does take you step by step very explicitly into how to register on the Explorers platform for the teachers and then to create a class, add students to that class, and then make an assignment. And once the assignment's made, they're ready to get started with their student. And, you know, Peter, we've been talking a lot about teachers and students with this program. Is WorldlyWise something that a teacher can just come over to WorldlyWise3000.com and sign up for? Or is this something that a district has to subscribe or purchase to? Yeah, you do need to subscribe. So I would actually point you to eps.schoolspecialty.com because that's the website where there's all the information about the program, some overview videos. Uh, the pricing is there online and you can even uh, figure out how to order it online or to contact EPS customer service. Uh, so I would actually point you to eps.schoolspecialty.com for those specific purposes. Well, Peter, I got to tell you, I've been uh, in touch with a lot of school districts since ISTE, since learning about this great new system, and there are so many classrooms out there that are going to be using WorldlyWise this year. If yours is one of them, certainly let us know. You can, of course, find us online at Twitter, but if you guys want to reach out to Peter and his group, you can, of course, find him on Twitter at School Specialty. Peter, thank you so much for taking the time today and sharing WorldlyWise with us. Do you have any last, uh, any last remarks or any last words of encouragement for anybody out there that's looking for a great reading platform? Yeah, I, I definitely would. I mean, I, what's really remarkable about WorldlyWise i3000 in particular is it really is bringing, bringing the instructor at the heart of vocabulary development with their students. You saw when I was in there how teachers can be a part of their learning looking at that ongoing formative data that's being collected, making their instructional decisions based on where they think st students need the most help and guidance, and just increasing the student engagement and excitement with the peer-to-peer -peer sharing, the social engagement. We also have added differentiated passages in the reading comprehension part because we want to teach vocabulary in context. So the differentiation for on-level passages and passages that are written below level at a lower lexile level is really opening up the door for more students to engage with these kinds of uh, vocabulary development opportunities. Peter, thank you so much for taking the time. I hope everybody has a chance to check everything out over at worldlywise3000.com or check everything out on Twitter at School Specialty. They've got a great Facebook social media campaigns going there. Check everything out. And one more time, thank you guys out there for making TeacherCast your home for professional development. There's, of course, several great ways that you can be a part of this and all of our shows. You can find us on Twitter at TeacherCast. Leave us a voicemail over at teachercast.net slash voicemail. Email us at feedback at teachercast.net and subscribe to this and all of our shows over teachercast.net slash iTunes and teachercast.net slash YouTube. On behalf of everybody here on the TeacherCast Educational Broadcasting Network, my name is Jeff Bradbury, reminding you to keep up the great work in your classrooms and continue sharing your passions with your students. <laughs>